All right. All right. So as usual, with like an eight person conversation, only three of us are here <laughs> when it's time to start. But it's anyway, we were we, we were just uh, I was outside setting up some irrigation because uh, having to hand water uh, my garden twice a day, every day. And then when I go out of town. So I'm going to go to Rhode Island to see my parents. So I'm quickly setting stuff up. But you were talking about uh, the joys of, of your hand watering setup. Yeah, I have a I have a watering wand like 15 feet long. Oh, so it's just like like water. It's not really, but it's like I have like one of those hella funny ones. I was like, oh, that'd be kind of as you reach through the whole hoop, basically. You know, I have like nine foot hoops. So you can just kind of like water all the way over there. It like makes hand watering not quite so bad. Um, I don't have to go around and everything, but um, I have it all set up. It's a, it's like it's set up to be uh, like the drip is there if I plant the way that I put in the drip, but <laughs> I don't because I always wind up planting some weird random stuff and going, okay, I want to do some of these, some of those, and then. Now it's like, okay, well, that drip is not, it doesn't work anymore. And then uh, since I put it in too, I've changed a little bit. Um, and it's like, I have like, a, I have like four long hoops. And in one of them, I pretty much always dep it. And in the other one, I dep it sometimes. And in another one, I've never depped it yet. And then the other one has like a full on skin on it. And I use it for like my springtime greenhouse cold frame or for stuff that's real late that didn't finish yet. I'll put it in there to keep it out of the weather. Um, but uh, initially the three hoops were all irrigated and uh, okay, there's 150 plants and seven gallon pots in each hoop and this is how it's done. And, but I just, I, I can't keep myself like um, planting what I'm supposed to plant. I wind up, planting way more than I'm supposed to plant so then you know like now one hoop winds up having like you know uh, uh, like a thousand plants in it and so the drippers don't work for that and um, so now I'm having a season of hand watering which is just super goofy after you know but it, you know it, it just it's where it is right now so you, you get the season goes so fast you're like all right cool next year I'll get it all dialed in it's like the life story of a grower, man. Like our eyes get so much bigger than our fucking gardens. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I never grow um, the amount of plants that I can grow. I always grow more and something always gets fucked off. Guaranteed every year. There's like, oh, ah, like it comes down to like you wind up triaging where you're like, yeah, that one doesn't matter. That, that group doesn't matter. All right get rid of those you know i always want to keep like all my males and i'll be like no narrow it down with these get keep you know 10 males out of this and then you know then narrow it down and narrow it down and um but i always look at them like no i want to keep everything and my problem is i'm always like this is going to be a seedless run and i always introduce pollen like it's like it never goes to play in where i'm like this is straight for the head and then i always bring in like a little bit and dust pretty much everything in the fucking room it's like, yeah, yeah. I used to always, any plant that I grew, I used to always seed a few branches of it. And uh, people are always real fra afraid of the pollen, but I wouldn't ever get stray seeds anywhere, you know? Like, yeah. not any, you, you tend to get in a whole, in a whole patch. I've always noticed like a whole garden, no matter what, it always seems like there's a couple stray seeds, even if you can't figure out how, where they came from, you know? But I've never had any more from seeding a couple branches here and there. You just have to be really careful. Always yeah, wait. I'm pretty good about cleaning out my rooms, but all my buddies get so pissed off when they come over to smoke jars because everything's always fucking seeded. Seed, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I just, I just can't help it. It's like every run, I'm like, all right, man, this is for the head. I swear it won't be seeds. Like, and then well, I still bring pollen. Well, a few seeds only yet. sucks if you assume that you will never find a few seeds. If you know that you might find a few seeds, it's no big deal, you know. Like when I'm on vacation places you get these random bags of weed and you're like, all right, there's probably some seeds in it. So when you break it down, you look for the seeds, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's not that big of a deal, but everybody likes to grab a big thing, pile of weed and mulch it up or whatever they do. And then it's like, oh, the way I roll weed, if there's seeds in it, I'm going to notice because I, yeah. I break it down because I like to break down and roll the joint. Like it's like a little meditation, you know? Like, yeah. Tea. 
my buddies get all pissed though because I'm sitting there like sorting seeds. I'm like, all right, man, chill. Like, I gotta fucking put these in the bag over here. Like, let me find the one that's labeled and stuff. Like, I'm always taking like an extra ten or fifteen minutes to smoke when they're like, dude, I just want to try the fucking flavor. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just pack me some shit up, man. Cool. Right. But uh, man, so it looks like our comrades aren't quite here yet today. But um, we're here to start talking about that Moon Mountain Kush, man. A bunch of us are super excited to run that. Um, I just got my seeds wet a few days ago. Um, nice. They just they just hit the uh, soil. I think uh, two days ago I put them in, but um, shoot, man. So this is pretty much this is the black affy throwback to the headband. So what's the throwback for the black affy? Did you have to go back into it and kind of pull it back out of some seeds, or were you able to just kind of find the clone? Yeah, no. What it was was I had um, I had the uh, the uh, it's the Jaro on the on the Florida or Florida Florida um og um bag seed that i got from my buddy and he gave me a little thing i think i only got like three females and then the following year he was like um i seeded it with jar seeded all those with jar and one of them i really liked the smell and the next year my buddy was like oh i got the clone that those came out of and i was like oh cool so then i took it and i put it onto it so it's not like a direct back cross because there's not really a recurrent parent but it is back crossed into the same gene pool you know um and so that was uh that was what i had and then um i grew out you know i grew them a bunch of times but i grew out some of those um out of the f2s i grew uh, i grew a nice group of them and i think i had maybe like 50 or 60 females of them. And I had one that when I went through, I was like, wow, this one smells like really like kind of like uh, more acrid and, and like more like skunky to me. It's, it's not really that skunky a weave. It smells more, it's really hard to describe, but it's, it's, it's like, it's what black Appy smelled like when I had it. That the black affy was in the jarro, you know, it was the original mar- male. That was the only thing that was that was something that I had a seed line of to put on to the Hindu, to put on the PK, to put on the sour diesel that like started it. That was where the you know the male came from in that in that cross. And uh, so I was going through and I was like, man, this thing smells so good. And after a while, I realized like, okay, I I think before I cut it, I had realized just because of the look and the color. But I know for sure that by the time I had actually dried it and smoked it, I was like, damn, this is like the straight black affy, but with a little bit of the influence of the stronger OG weed, you know? Okay. Um, And, uh, you know, it's the one I took it to, like, uh, one of the Regen conferences and smoked it with a few people who were heavy heavy weed heads that were like, oh, shit, that's good. And I was like, yeah, it's good, right? Because, you know, you get, like, when you have – and all your stuff all lined up you have all these new plants and you're like okay well i'm gonna bring some of this one and bring some of that one i'm cutting them off the wire and i'm like yeah. all right well i've smoked it i liked it and i smoked it with like uh my buddy bamboo and a couple other people dude that, the high is <laughs> Lost so for a j- just be patient he'll be back no worries. This this is his signature cliffhanger where he'll be about yeah. to make a really important point and then he'll freeze We're, up. Where it's is. the same thing my it's the exact same thing my brain does when I'm super, super high. <laughs> and have a conversation. This is just like the manifest like, physical form of it. So you can see what's going on in my brain and the, the, the monkey beating the drums and shit. This is the version of this is the internet version of that. So you can see like uh so now I get to say so where what what the fuck was I talking about? We're where seeing were we GoPro before? Jackson, huh? <laughs> where, where were we before we cut? Um, so you were talking about how it's that acrid Afghani that when other people smoke it, it's just, it was heavy. You brought it out to that regen conference. Um, and how you said that like uh, your buddy Bamboo was a fan of it. Yeah. Yeah. We just, we were smoking it and it was like, it's, it's that, it's that kind of weed where it doesn't smell like there's certain weeds like that I associate with the smell when I smell them. I'm like, okay, this is going to be strong as shit. A lot of it tends to be that gassy weed. Yeah, where you yeah. smell it and it's like you just know you relate it to being like an OG or a, or some kind of sour cross or some headbandy thing and this wasn't really like that 
so we once we smoked it it was kind of like whoa okay but we didn't get that real heavy high we got kind of more of a like a cerebral like um really like bright happy cool good high which is like what i get off of the, my favorite jaro so it was like you know the jaro thing but to the affy side and um so after smoking it a few times it's like one of those ones now i've kept it i can't remember how many years i've had it but i've had or since before i had the hoops up out there so it was probably 2000 maybe 2018 i hunted it and um so it's been around i've grown it quite and i like it i crossed it with a lime like uh, dutch is growing those out um the lime cross and i haven't really tried much other stuff with it but it did have that acrid afghani thing to it and skunk tech had this headband um that we're like you know 99.9 percent .9 sure um you never know if you don't get it from the original person clones are weird like that right but i think it's 707 headband because there's very few headbands that smell like sour diesel um and this one when i butted out next to my headband crosses that were because the the 707 is the same father that made royal kush which was an afghani sour and when you grow um the headband that skunk tech has when when i grew it out next to my root beer and my coco cola which is a root from the root beer line they like kind of they, their leaves faded and turned dark at the same time and um and uh it finished kind of fast where uh like you could tell it's like this afghani thing and when skunk tech selfed it all the plants were like these big broadleaf purple afghanis none of them were like diesel yeah. so it was like okay so one of the parents in here is a very dominant hardcore broadleaf fast afghani which in the 707 headband that's like the afghan the salmon creek rock butt afghani that is in the it's in the royal kush you know yeah. So there's no other headbands that I know of that are like that. They're all mostly renamed OG cuts. And then there's the one they call the LA Kush, which people have now named the Notso because Notso was the only one that knew it was called the LA Kush because that's how he got it. Whereas any of the rest of the people who got it up here, we all just got it as headband, as far as I can tell. Um, and so that headband is the, um, is the one that Skunk Tech did a bunch of reversal stuff with. He, he reversed it and he put it on all kinds of stuff yeah, and it yeah. bred really good with everything. It was like, he crossed it with all these different plants and you would look at the jars and you would really see the character of the moms, but they would all be more resinous than the moms were. Uh -huh. And they would all be really potent and tasty and nice. And it brought like a lot of nice stability to everything. So, um, he had wound up with a bunch of extra pollen and he came to visit because a lot of times he'd like come up and he'd bring like flats of stuff of stuff that he'd grown for my seeds and some of his stuff he made from his seeds and clones he got like check this out and we'd sit around and smoke weed and check it out and um so he gave me a couple vials of that headband pollen from when he did his reversal and uh I took it and I and I had these extra plants that I was like all right I could cross these with something but it seemed like Here's something that's more it carries a lot of Afghani and it has a lot of um, like the acrid skunky notes to it. And so I was like, all right, you know, this could be a really, really cool cross. So I, I hit that and then I threw a couple of the grape lime skunk clones that I had in there at the same time. And I hit them all with um, skunk text pollen and um, I didn't pollinate them as carefully as I should have. And I probably didn't, and the room was probably a little bit too humid because I had other stuff and I didn't. And I, so I, I closed off my, my um, exhausts and everything. So it got a little more humid and I probably spoiled more pollen, but I wound up with a good little amount of the seeds. And um, I have like, you know, I'm hoping that they're going to be really good. The both parents are really potent. They're both pretty fast. They both get a lot of resin. They both taste really, really good. And they're kind of in that same vein of in there, you know, in, inside of them is all this Afghani stuff. So it should be pretty cool. Woo, what's going on, Corey? And, and in the thing, like, as I saw you in the chat, I was like, ah, oh, cool, Corey's here. And then I was like, ah, oh, shit, I forgot to send the link to Corey. It's all good. 
It's all good. How's it going, guys? Hey, how you doing, man? Good, good. Glad to be here. Corey awesome. lives in darkness. <laughs> I do right now. Yeah, that's for sure. He's a fan that's of sure. dramatic lighting. I do too. It's just early. We had a whole painting series that we did where we were all Renaissance characters, where we were just. But... <laughs> right, <man. laughs> um, so Gene was just explaining to us that uh, the headband that was used in the reversal came from Skunk Tech. So they think it's the 707. So that Mandelbrot headband, um, which is that sour to the Afghani. Um, so he was just talking about how he's expecting a lot of it to come out real potent, stuff like that. I'm so, curious, um, is that the same donor as in the uh, Hollywood hairband? Um, the Hollywood hairband, yeah, it's the same. It's the same, except that was a, a that was the PK clone that I keep, and that is actually also in this as well. So it's like the same thing is actually in there, but then yep. on my side is added more OG and um, some sour and some Hindu uh, and some black affy, but the PK is, is present in, in that side too. So they'll be very different. They won't be, cause I didn't, the, the one, the, the mother of this cross is a lot different, but, um, but they're, they are in there. Like, awesome. It is. So I assume it's the same headband as uh, in skunk text headlights and headline actually it's in the, the gas same. cap it's too, the, right? It's the, it's, it's the, what, you know, people would call the skunk tech headband and then people would be like, why'd skunk tech name it after himself? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, but it's just the headband that skunk tech has. Like I would call it the skunk tech headband. Cause it's the one that like I got from him. Um, can can, got, can you just quickly explain that to people? Cause it's basically like he popped a bunch of seeds. He hunted, he found stuff he liked. And it's just like, this is one that I personally liked. He's not trying to steal uh, the name. Yeah, no, no, no. I, this, this, the, the, the headband that he has is just a headband that somebody had and gave him as a clone. And um, we were able to track it back to the guy who gave it to him, passed back through him to the guy who he got it from. So now two people removed. And then, um, and then even my buddy uh, Lion Tree, Lion Tree Farms up in Oregon was like, oh, that, that you got that from so and so and he got it back then he's like oh i gave that to him in santa rosa in like 2008 or something and then i was like okay so this is an old cut this goes back far enough that there weren't a whole ton of headbands running around at that point like back then i had only ever heard of one and then um when i started asking people about like the headbands i, I had heard of lumpa's headband and everybody said it's an og it's not a, it's not like the headband that you're talking about. And I was like, well, the one that I have is like sour diesel. And they were like, Oh, well that's the 707 headband. And I was like, okay, cool. And then years later, uh, talking to not so dog, he was like, well, what was the one that you, what was the one you had like? And I said, well, it was really green and it, indoor. It kind of wanted to nipple out a little bit and get a little bit like ugly, but cool at the same time. And the hairs were more orange than sour, but the weed was sellable as sour. But when you smoked it, it got you way more high than sour and it smelled more like old super skunk than sour does. And he goes, oh, shit. He goes, that's the L.A. Kush. That's the one that I have. And I was like, oh, OK. And then I wound up putting up a post about it like, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago. And um, the dude who gave it to my buddy, uh, OG Foundation Farms, the dude who gave it to him was Humble Standard. And Humble Standard gave it to him and asked him, well, what, what was up? Where'd you get that headband cut that you had? And he goes, oh, that was the Blueberry headband. And I was like, uh, it's weird because my buddy wouldn't have renamed it from Blueberry headband to just headband. He would have been like, dude, it's Blueberry headband. You know, like it sounds better, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah, Blueberry headband's headband. killer for sure. Yeah. And, and my buddy's like, the, my buddy OG Foundation Farms is the first dude who showed me like marijuana botany and told me about how to label crosses and like the very basics of starting stuff out when I first learned about like the finer points of weed. So he's not a dude who like gets this clone and chops the tag in half and renames it. You know what I mean? Like he's like a stickler for names and for lineages and all this different stuff. So 
I was just kind of like, eh, I, I wasn't going to argue with the dude because he was the one the cut came from. But I like have asked everybody. I'm like, have you ever seen blueberry headband? And they're all like, yeah, it's like headband, but it's sweet. It's got more blueberry to it. And I'm like, yeah. I'm going to confuse her for a soup, more super skunky sour diesel, you know? And also he was, he humble standard also said on the same, on the same post in the same comments, he was like, yeah, that he's all the regular headband was a pain in the ass. The blueberry was the one that was easy to grow. And I was like, well, when I grew the one that I got that he gave to our buddy, I grew it and I didn't even trim it because I grew it kind of uh, closer to the bushes and the creek and my old place, which was a little less sunny. And it, I, I ended up making tincture for my grandpa out of those bags, out of those bags of weed. I got a lot of weed, but when I looked at it, I was like, I just don't want to trim it. Cause it was like sour diesel, <laughs> but like really loose. And I was like, Oh, I had so much weed. And I was like, it's really going to be really potent. I'm just going to take it all. And I gave it all to my grandma and she put it all in jars with vodka and let them sit in the dark and made tincture, you know? Mm. Um, but so that the, 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 everything didn't add up. So in my opinion, the headband that I had was what they call what not so calls the LA Kush. And also when I saw Notso's jar, I opened it and instantly I was like, Ooh, that's the headband. And he was like, yep, that's, and I was like, I was like, all right, cool. So, um, the one that Mandel brought past was the 707 headband. And that was that same plant crossed with the same male that he used to make Royal Kush, which was a sour diesel crossed with the Salmon Creek Afghani, uh, rock bud Afghani or something they called it. And so um, that's why I say when you said, when I, when I talked to Skunk Tech, I'm like, yeah, what'd you get out when you, when you self the headband? And he goes, just a bunch of like purple broadleaf Afghani. And I was like, okay, well that makes sense. That's what happens when you breed things further that come from these super dominant Afghanis. And probably if you ask Mandelbrot, he'd probably tell you, yeah, a lot of the plants were just straight broadleaf Afghani, but this one was more like the sour. And so I, that's why he cloned it. You know, that's my hypothesis on that. But anyway, that's the rundown of that, of, of the reasons why, like, I'm like, I settled on going, well, I think it's 707. First time I grew it, I smelled it and it was fully seeded and I had let it go really long. But when I crushed it up and I took the seeds out of it dry, I was like, mm, it's not an OG. It could be the LA Kush because it's all the way green and uh, it smells really like skunky and, and gassy. And then I grew it again and I let it go full term. And as soon as I saw it go purple, I, I called Skunk Tech and I'm all, dude, it's not the LA. It's it's something different, you know? It's got to be like, it looks so much like the sour and headband crosses that I did with the black Athy that it makes sense to me that it would be, you know, headband, sour, and another dark Afghani like that. So, you know, and still, you never know for sure. It could be... Uh, it could be an S1 of a um, 707 headband. It could be a hybrid of a 707 headband, but those things aren't that likely being that he grew out the S1s and they all looked like a parent. If it had been an S1 in the same direction, sour again, when he selfed it, you probably would have got away from that Afghani parentage a little bit, you know? But Definitely some stretcher plants for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool to hear, man. So, um well, that brings me to the question with the black affy then. So is it black affy because of that color that you were just mentioning? Because it gets like those darker tones. Yeah. When you grow it, it like all goes like a, a range of being like red and black to like black and black. It's just like gets it gets really, really dark when you let it go. Um the weed in the bag was never really as dark. It was the plant that turned. It was more the big fan leaves that would get super purple. Yeah, the fade, the um, final fade kind of thing. Yeah, but beautiful. And then that's another funny story too with the with the with the black affy is that, you know, the guy who gave it to my buddy has a brother who's a friend of mine. And I asked him, I'm all, what's the story on the black affy when I got it from your brother? Um he said that it was the old Afghani that they've had since the seventies. And when I grew it, I mean, you could tell it's like a crazy broadleaf, really early, really squat, like shaped like a, 
like an egg or a pyramid, you know, just like very, very Afghani leaves that are as big as, as somebody's torso leaves as big as only thing that I ever grew besides a couple. I mean, I had big red, big blue, black Afi and monkey balls, deep chunk. Those were the only things that I ever saw that got a leaf as big as a person. You know what I mean? Where you look in one finger of the leaf is this wide, you know, like your whole hand on one finger and there's like 15 fingers, you know? And, uh, that was, um, that, that was like a very, to me, like a very Afghani thing. But when I ended up talking to his brother, he was like, Oh, the black Afi, he goes, no, that was the black African. And I was like, people used to call it the black African, but I always told them they don't have broadleaf weed like this that comes from African strains. It's all narrow leaf. Like I've literally never seen a super broad. And I, there's some broad, but never like an extreme cannabis Afghanica, like broadleaf, right? On an African strain. So and I was always like, I, it's got it's black Afi. It's not it's black Afi, not black like Afi is what people say for Afghans. Like, I, but people said black African, and I was like, I don't know, that doesn't make sense. And he was like, he goes, yeah, it was black, it was black, uh, black African crossed with blueberry. And I was like, huh, well that's interesting because there is like these blueberry things that pop out of black Afi and that pop out of, but then if I think about it, I'm like, yeah, and blueberry popped out of dirt perp and dirt big bud and all these other things that you grow too that are totally unrelated and like my friend chris up in redway was like yeah 1984 i bred the blueberry that's popular up here in humble and i'm it's like different than the blueberry that everyone knows from dj short you know sure. but um but then when i described the plants to him he goes mm. he goes no that sounds like our afghani and i was like well that was what jeff said so i think that's what it was you know but uh but yeah, the black af the black the black afi, um, you know, it's weird stuff with stories. Like, could it be some kind of trippy black African weed that was crossed with a blueberry and then bred really hard to the Afghani side of the blueberry? Possibly. You don't really know without like trying to, you know. But the other story made more sense, being that it's how I got the seeds originally not from the guy's brother who didn't breed the seeds or have anything to do with them. He was just kind of like, you know, peripheral to that story going, ah, I think that was this one. And so, you know, e either way, it's old. It's an old, old line that came from Spy Rock, um, which is a real famous area for having a lot of the old first stuff. That's where Tom Hill uh, moved and grows and, and uh, lived when he did all his famous, you know, deep chunk and all that stuff. And, uh, it's just an old, cool, awesome, awesome plant. And it, and it did, when I crossed it with things, it did give it a particular potency where you'll have the weed and you'll look at it, you'll break it down and it won't seem super resinous. And then you'll hit the weed and all of a sudden it'll just choke the hell out of you. Like that old school, like more so than the modern choky gassy stuff you know it's like og will choke you a lot of things will choke you but this would like really you'd like breathe it in and it'd be like smooth like steam you think nothing of it and then all of a sudden your lungs are full and you know you fucked up you yeah know? Like old, old expando like really a sign of really high 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 grade weed start um, sweating balls kind of thing yeah, close your I eyes like, i don't see that that much anymore but yeah it was one of those ones it's really cool so that you know i was happy that it, it leaned back to that direction um because it was you know it was just a cool a cool old heirloom strain oh that's killer man and it's funny because i did have someone ask me earlier they were like is is the black Afi a black african or a black afghani and i without hesitation was like oh afghani but it's funny because now you're like, oh, it could have been black African, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, in a, in another world maybe, but you know. Yeah. Um, to me, I'm like, I think there's like a three to 5% chance that like yeah, it could, sure. that story could be the correct one. But even after describing it to the guy who said, oh no, I think maybe that was this one. He was like, eh, no, no, that sounds like our old pure Afghani. And I was like, okay. He's like, that was the one with the big leaves with the big thick buds and real consistent and with those smells and you know so. sure 
And in that era too, I think that first set of blueberries they came out were a little bit more on the thin leaf side too. It was like that second set of blueberry that I think DJ did that they described as having a little bit more of the broad leaf characteristics. So I think timeline wise too, I don't know if that match up a whole lot. I think you're spot on. Man. Yeah, and I, I think I don't know. I think either way, it was before. I think it yeah. Could- like those releases as far as when it was i'd have to ask joe what he thought about that like the particular time sure. but um you know it just it didn't it all said and done it didn't really add up it was just like the headband and me i'm like i don't care i don't have anything like i already made the the weed that's really good from these things so it's all it's all like you know like i i had people i had people talking about it uh going oh well you know gene was using saying that he has not he used not so's headband i'm like i don't care it doesn't it doesn't matter which headband yeah. i use to make what root beer was because i like it you know what I yeah mean? either way it's good weed regardless yeah, of what the name is right so it, it, didn't, it didn't matter to me and, and also i was saying that that was the cut that i used long before anybody all of a sudden started going oh we really want that now everybody's saying their headband is that headband and it's not people are like online going oh i got this one and it's super i got Notso's headband and i love it and it's so fast and i'm like <laughs> yeah. yeah no dude sorry bro finishes like november 1st here outside that's an eight day <laughs> train you know like uh, <laughs> You don't got it, dude, you know? Yeah. And uh, and people just shrug it off. Oh, yeah, no, just keep calling it that. I'm like, dude, you, you need people to verify. I listen to everything. I'm like, all right. Fuck, if Humboldt Standard said maybe that's what it was, I'm like, maybe that's maybe that's what it was. Maybe he had an extra cool cut of blueberry headband. Yeah. It just none of it matters to me. I'm already, like, so many steps removed from the parrots yeah. that, like, you're not going to grow the things I have with that headband and get that headband anyway. So the point sure. with the, you know, a lot of yeah. these lineages are like that. Mr. Trees. What's yeah, up, buddy. gentlemen? You're not, sitting on the toilet. You're not sitting on the toilet <laughs> right now, are you, man? <laughs> That's what it looks like, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, my little my little shack office back here. Hey, we I had to pass the kids off to the to the wife so I could sneak out and hang out with you guys for awesome. a couple. So sorry I'm a little late. All good, man. Well, we appreciate you making it out with us. We were just kind of shooting the shit on that black affy that was used in the headband. Gross there. Uh, so, man, I guess uh, I pretty much have milked Gene for as many questions as I'm sure he feels like dealing with after a long camping trip weekend. I'm going to start talking to you boys down there. So, uh, have you guys popped your seeds yet? I've popped, I've, yeah, I popped mine. I got uh, I got six, six up out of the dirt ready to go so just as of as of yesterday or the day before they just popped their little heads up so uh sitting in one gallon cans and the old mr trees mix you know it's like a cactus mix situation you know sand and hummus and uh, peat stuff like that but uh one gallons six of them up and uh yeah that's where that's where we're at right now so nice what about you Corey? you popped your seeds yet so I had uh, I had my seeds early and I had them popped already and I had a uh, HLV scare and I ended up doing a hard reset and Peter sent me some new seeds um, nice. and so I got those in the dirt how oh, probably three or four weeks ago and of course you know doing a hard reset I got some new dirt and fucking smoked them so yeah. <laughs> they're on the mend now I got them in some new soil and. You know they're coming around, but yeah, no, it's it's been a long, hard stretch of horrible luck with plants and yeah, bad news. But uh, yeah, no, they'll come around. We'll get them going. We'll be all hey right. man, well, this is the Moon and Night group, man. That's what we're calling this. So we're gonna fucking get through this together, man. You don't worry about that, Corey. Um, we'll be all right. Well, I'm way behind you guys, man. I, I didn't know. I thought we were just all waiting for Peter to say, hey, go. But uh, <laughs> so I did mine like three or four days ago, man. So uh, for mine, I just um, took the old paper towel method. Um, I soaked those with um, that humix mix that uh, Peter actually sent me. It's a really cool liquid uh, humic, humic acid. Um, just did my water at a basic 6.4 pH, soaked the paper towel in that, put my seeds in there um seven out of seven showed some tails and then uh threw those guys in dirt and i just looked right now before i hopped on here and i got four heads up so i'm hoping to see the other three in the morning they'll be up yeah 
Yeah, there were there were definitely some healthy looking seeds and all, right, that all those tails were popping yeah, out, so they were stoked. Yeah, leave it on. Yeah, yeah. All mine popped too, so it was twenty four hours just boom, they were they were popping little tails, so in the in the one gallons they went, so they were they were good. Heck yeah, man. So Ken who just joined sent me a bunch of pictures and I'll share them in a minute. Ken, can you hear us? Yeah, I got you guys. Ten by ten. Amazing. Where where you're where? Uh, Willamette Valley, the uh, western side, uh, like the east slope of the coast range. Yeah. O Oregon. Nice. And nice. You're, you, you popped your seeds how long ago? Because your plants are pretty big. Yeah, that would have been the first week of May. Okay. Nice. And so you're doing yours outdoor where you were able to get those outside for the full term season. Yeah, that was my goal um, was and I only managed to get out two. four of them uh, <laughs> had some problems getting out of the uh, let's just say getting out of the house. And uh, I went with a 30 gallon and a 45 gallon and the one of the 45 seems to be loving life while the other one is just kind of cruising along. Not really, not as, I don't know. The one of the 45 is definitely loving life. Sure. And so that soil uh, that you're using there, is that like a super soil or you did like a, some like top gas amendments or are you doing like some liquid feeds on it? Um, yeah. So I started off with the super soil. I had, been using a living soil the last few years and i got a super soil from a place called the the worm farm it's uh you know about an hour's drive away and they pre-make super soil for a lot of the farms in the area and whatnot so i just i spent the money and got a yard of it and figured okay that'll fill up my little pots because my 100 gallon um has uh, some auto flowers in it, oh, but are. I do add, oh, like fish brew, uh, some bioag products. Um, there's a couple of other, you know, the root wise trio as well as, uh, you know, some K and F stuff as well. Uh, lactobacillus, um, different fermentations, kind of messing around with everything. <laughs> and that seems like at times how the best of the best comes out, man. Just a good blend of everything. Like you get a really nice like flavor from like that living soil organic side of things, but you can steer your plants using any of those kind of like liquid or dry amendments. So it definitely sounds like you got a killer regimen, man. Those plants look stoked. I don't know what you're talking about, how that 30 wasn't stoked. They look look pretty happy to me, man. Look like some traditional Afghani style plants. They look stoked, man. They're kicking in. Okay, okay. Well I didn't mean to no disrespect intended on the little pot. <laughs> it's average. <laughs> Size don't matter, man. Don't be talking about little pots like that. <laughs> we're, we're just, man. My but, first uh, run was uh, five gallon living soil indoors. Oh, nice. And man. I got about, you know, two and a half ounces off of each plant. They were auto flowers. There you go, man. Yeah, it just depends on my situation. Like all my outdoor stuff, like I've got some like in the ground stuff and I, I have like my hundred gallon pots, but it just depends what, what plants I'm working with and stuff like that. Um, so I'm totally with you, man. It's just relative to what you got. Your situation's different. Um, so as far as like uh, media goes for you guys, you're telling me that was an interesting regimen for Tyler with the the sand and the uh, the hummus. Corey, what's your, uh, your, sand, your soil setup? Um, well, again, um, doing the reset, I'm going to go back to, uh, growing in coast of Maine in 15 gallon pots. Okay. And after the scare that I had, I'm not going to put anything into the four by four beds until I get them tested make sure that they're clean. Um, at that point I'll build soil again and build the beds and, and grow on them again. Uh, you know, start from scratch again, you know, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna pretty much do the Stonington Coast of Maine, 15 gallon pots. Um, nice. You know, dry amendments, some some bioag products, kind of just the same exactly, 
like Ken was saying, you know, um, a little bit of everything. I, the one thing that I think my biggest uh, loss is going to be is I, I, I tossed my worm uh, bins and everything away just because I was composting plant material into it. I just, you know, I, I don't know what any of this is. And like, I tried to err on the side of caution, but like, I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss my worm castings bad. So, sure, sure. I'll send you some worms. I'm, I actually, I've got some worms and I'm starting to back up, but it's like, you know, you know how that goes. It's, it's, it's a process, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the uh, Costa Maine. I started out with Costa Maine originally, and that was part of my system when I built my bed. So I'll just, you know, I'll stick with it. Awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah. Then again, this time of year might not be the best. To... Tonight? Say it again. Do you want to do a little word play tonight? Oh, it's now. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. No, no, no. I'll, I'll pull it out a little later. Okay. <laughs> I've got the fireplace going, man. Go ahead. I've set the mood. So. <laughs> Um, but man, so Gene, it sounds like uh, you mentioned uh, indoor. So did you do the breeding for this uh, indoor or did you do a little bit of it outdoor? It sounds like obviously it's a continued process where some of the plants have been indoor and outdoor. But uh, I, I, did, I, did, and actually, I did. Jackson, I did. Jackson, before you answer that question. All right. This is our little uh, Corey interlude. Oh, God. Corey, can I get a pronunciation on, on the word on screen? Slurpa. <laughs> you, you held back there. <laughs> All right. This one. Nine out of ten. <laughs> Chicken palm. Nice. And? Italian grinder. <laughs> Can we get it? Can that we get eye is not even there. One? Slurpa. There we go. All right, Jackson, carry on. My fridge is running in the back here, my seed fridge. Uh, the was it bred indoor? It was bred in it was bred indoor, technically, but they were uh, on a they were on the hourly rate. So they had a room, but they had to leave. Yeah. So everybody got put in the room just to be bred. Right. Okay. And then after everything was was fully seeded, then they got they got you know moved Push. out to a staging area, washed for a few days, and then moved back with a bunch of other plants. Yeah. Spoiled a, the pollen and. Um, yeah. So that's a that's a little secret from Genester then, huh? So what do you wash your plants with, man? Do you just use water just to kind of make that just okay. water? Just a water with a with the with the watering wand. Sure. I'd like use the watering wands that have the the thousand hole uh, shower head on the yep. end, so it's super soft and it really you know like it really sprays stuff nice. Sure. And then I just turn the hose all the way up and I wash the plants from the top. I wash the plants from the bottom. I let them sit. I'll do that to them like a couple times a day for a few days, so that I know that they're fully um, washed and that they're sitting with just tons of humidity around them that whole time. And then I can put them back somewhere. And then I know that they don't have live pollen that's going to go on to anything else if I don't want them to want, want anything to intermingle, you know? Oh, man. Oh, you can do one. a little bit more. Sure, sure. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about contamination. That's the important part. So that's killer, man. Yeah, I mean, oh. you have to know, you know, it's one of those things that was like years of, of like, okay, does this, is this shit going to work? I don't even know if this shit's going to work, but we'll know. And then, you know, you discover, okay, it, it, it worked okay. So, sure. Pull it off. Yeah. 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 Because I was always, I got so paranoid at a point, I'd start doing those diluted like alcohol ratios that people like to use. Like, uh, I would never use an essential oil at that point, but it's the same as like my IPM regimen where I would do like one cup of alcohol to one gallon of water. And I would just hit everything just because I'd be worried about like contaminations and shit. So it's good to know I could just use water. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you learn over the years too. Like right, right now, I'm doing a, a fem breeding, and it's of course more temperamental than a regular breeding. But like, you learn over the years that pollen is not very resilient. Like it, it when you when you're scared of pollen, it feels like oh, if I get like a few little flowers straying on something that herms out, it's going to seed my whole crop. 
And sometimes you're surprised, like you do find a little, you're like, oh, this whole section of this like big outdoor plant, like back in the day, you'd be like, fuck, it's seeded. Like when I first started doing cherry pie, cherry pie F1s was like, um, oh shit, and it just pops out and you're like, yep, there's some seeds in this now and there's only a little bit of pollen, you know? But when you're actually intentionally trying to seed things a lot and you do it again and again and again and again, after a while you realize like, fuck, pollen's pretty touchy. It doesn't just want to hang around for hella long. It'll hang around if you have a really nice indoor setup and your humidity is really low and everything's super nice. And it's like, okay, well, then you're going to have to really fuck that up and go in there and spray everything with whatever, you know, like, like you said, alcohol, bleach, something, you know, I'd go in and spray everything down with bleach. But like, um, it's constantly spoiling. And you, you learn that when you're actually trying to make tons of seeds and you fuck it up. Like I've gone into a room before and gone, okay, I'm gonna load this room up with these 45 females and I got this one big beautiful male and I'm gonna set it up basically on a pedestal, you know, on a bucket or whatever you got sitting around so it's higher than everything and you go in there and you shake it and call them with every fucking wear and you're like, okay, I'm gonna, this is good, this is great. This is gonna be fully seated and then you close it all up and. You like get it, you know, do it a couple more times. You go and you take everything out and then you finish out all the weed and there's no seeds in it. But there's like eight seeds per plant. So you're like, well, the pollen was not sterile genetically. It's viable. But my environment, my my humidity from having all these plants in there sweating and not having it exhausted out because you're worried at the time you don't have the right filter going out. You have other stuff somewhere outside. You get paranoid. And then you're like, wow, I just saw so much pollen fly and there's no seeds. And then you realize like, okay, pollen's, pollen's not the big monster you think it is. It's actually kind of delicate and you have to, you know, you have to um, really try to pollinate things to make them sure. get pollinated. But there is a funny irony in that you grow, you know, cherry lime F1 in 2012 or whatever, and you're like seeds all over the bottoms of your plants. And you look and you're like, there's only a couple male flowers on here. But then you attempt to make seed, feminized, herming shit full on. And you're like, oh, is it working? I don't know. Like I'm not, my humidity is a couple points too high. And now yeah. like most of the flowers are dying as they're growing and it's like super frustrating. So you're like getting sure. the flowers at the perfect time and it's crazy, you know, but yeah. 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 Well, that's good. To, that's good to know, man. I mean, I know people kind of look for those like pointers. They're here interested in genetics, but you know, there's some breeders in here too. that are like, Oh shit. So Tyler, as our house pollen expert, can you talk about other plants whose pollen you find interesting for whatever reason? It's it's uh it's cool, like you know, Gene saying that it's it's more pollen's more fragile than with cannabis and the humidity and the whole thing, it's hundred percent on it's hilarious, you know. And and fem stuff it, you know pollen gets trapped in there it's just a whole nother ombre where you know you, you got to deal with that but other plants and other cannabis hemp and other things like that they have super strong pollen and that's part of you know that's part of their genetic you know makeup is, is they have, they're a little bit more durable and go a little bit farther and tolerate just a little bit a little bit more maybe a point or two more or other things like that you know things like corn and uh you know Yeah, offhand, the, the first thing I see when I with pollen flying, I think corn. So I'm out there shaking, shaking them, get the tassels, to get the pollination. And those old heirloom varieties, they don't, they don't pollinate as good as those new beefy varieties that you can buy in the packs. You know, so you really got to do more shaking to get that pollen to move. But the, you know, the, the more new school, you know, bred powerful corn, they, it seems to pollinate better and make better pollen, and it's more durable. It goes a little bit more you know so you know pollen is cool it's it's a wild thing it's a and times you know just, there we go get back up oh, now you're back. there you go how far all right all right pollen's all right. a beautiful thing yeah it's beautiful it's 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 wild it's it's one of those things you can chase all the time you think you have everything right 
and, and it just it doesn't work for whatever fucking reason, or you you get half of what you think you should, or um, in in food as well as cannabis, you know, it's just a, it's a it's a cool thing. Sometimes you get way too many from way you know from from a very small amount. It's like holy shit, how you know it, it's 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 really it's beautiful. Life kicks ass. Yeah, leave it to Mother Nature and not be predictable, right? Especially when us humans are trying our best and assume that we're going to make some project go a certain yeah. way. Do you, do you have selfing and feminizing as one of your topics? Yeah. Uh, not anything other than my question about the headband, but we can definitely go that route. Um, okay, so a couple of you guys are playing around with feminized seeds, so it'd be interesting to hear kind of your sure. thoughts on it. And myself, I've only done three runs of Femming, and it wasn't even with my genetics. It was stuff for preservation. So I'm not even going to be 100% the best on it, but I am going to give it my best. Um, so, Gene, do you know when Skunk Tech was doing those reversals, since he was able to actually capture pollen, like he would have had to done a shit ton of plants reversal-wise, right? Because generally when you reverse plants, you don't generally get a ton of pollen to actually collect. It's usually more of like you got to... Well, that's what we're figuring out that people who are more experienced than us, like already know there, there's a reason why the Europeans who kind of popularized the whole feminized seed thing, they all would use the same plant, you know, and a long time ago, what they would use basically in the end of the nineties, early two thousands with they, with they, there was one white widow clone that went around and they would use that one a lot. And they would um, they would use it because it didn't it, it they could kind of seed everything with it and then just call it the mom, whatever it was, you know, like, oh, you just use that white widow and you hit sour diesel and now you have sour diesel femmes, you know, and they're not really. But because it's a little bit transparent as far as not overpowering everything, right, they could use that. So then uh, when I was at the Emerald Cup, maybe um, 2014 or something. Uh, I was talking to a couple of guys from Europe and they were like, yeah, what we use now, we use the white. And that's our big secret. People don't know, you know? And I was like, oh, well, Rascal did really good making all those white crosses. They worked really great. I liked pretty much everything that I saw from that. And they were like, yeah, the white, that's what, that's now what we're using in Europe. And we is because it doesn't really smell very much, but it has tons of resin and it gets really nice buds. And whatever we cross it with, it winds up smelling more like the mom and it just dumps tons of pollen every time. So we can easily and reliably make femme versions of whatever clone we wanna make, you know? And um, so basically like when you go to do reversals, there's some plants that aren't really very fit for, you know, there's some plants that you can't grow where it's humid out. There's some plants you can't grow indoor. There's some plants you can't grow outdoor. There's some plants that like make very few seeds like OGKB. When you seed it, I seeded a whole plant and should have made 500 seeds. I got like 30 seeds. Um, there's And you, you can make that do better if you mess with it and reversals are the same. It's just that they don't work in the normal paradigm. So maybe like something that doesn't want to dump pollen, it's like, oh, well, but you got to feed it different. And then you got to give it a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then you got to spray it a little less or spray it a little more or mm -hmm. fuck with the hours so that you may actually leave it in the dark a little longer. So it'll stretch a little more. There's all kinds of tricks you could potentially use. These are all arbitrary things I'm saying. I'm not saying necessarily that they work. I'm just saying like, sure if you tweak things then things behave differently right Makes so sense. like uh uh the deal was that um you know uh skunk tech when he made his reversals he used a few plants that happened to be very very fit for reversals those plants do really well with that and when you start trying to do do reversals you realize like wow that's a huge value that you would never even really consider about a plant. Usually you're like, does it branch? Does it root? Does it grow fast? Does it finish good? Does it, is it mold resistant? Is it good smoke? Does it smell good? It's like, well, it could be all those things and it just reverses for shit. And then it's like, well, it's not, it's, it's great to breed, but it's not good to breed like this. And then if you really love it that much, then yeah, you can go ahead and try tons of different things and do experiments and figure out, okay, how do we get this one to reverse 
you know, in, a, in an optimal way. But you might be better off to just go, okay, well, this one's just not really for this, you know? Um, and it, it all depends. It's the same with that. It's, it's the same always with, with weed. It's like if you have something that reverses too easy and you want to, and you want to grow it. And it's like, it always herms on you. It's like when you go to reverse a plant, that's hard to reverse. You're like, I wish this thing liked to herm. Cause I really want to make self seeds of it and it won't self because it won't herm. And even like sour diesel, like almost all they're not there. It's a group of, of clones. Right. But like all of them will pretty much herm a little bit. It's not hard to get those to herm. But it turns out it's really hard to reverse them and get a successful reversal with them where you get a lot of pollen. So that's a really weird thing because you're like, dude, I can seed my whole crop on accident, but I can't do it on purpose. So what the fuck is that? You know, and then um, it, it doesn't do it reliably. Like a lot of people grow literally tons and tons and tons of sour and there's not any seeds in any of the pounds. And then somebody grows sour and they seeded their whole crop. It's totally hermed out and same damn clone, but what'd you do, you know? So like if, if we knew a little bit more about influencing the, the, the sex expressions in cannabis, then it, there's probably a lot of tricks where you go, oh, this one's stubborn. Well, it's not stubborn if you just do this, just up the, it needs way more copper or whatever it was, you know, you'd be like, okay, now this thing flips. Yeah. Um, so, but, but that's the deal is that there's basically certain plants that in, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a technique you use and it's always like everything kind of has a cookie cutter approach. You go, okay, how do you, you want to grow weed? So like, this is how you grow weed. You take your weed, you plant it, you put it in this pot, you grow it up, you do this. It's like, oh, but now what about if it was, a, if you're growing like a pure haze shit, you might need a new recipe now. And you might need a new space and you might need a whole new approach completely, you know, where it's like, and that's why I think like a lot of plants like, um, like, uh, gelato and all those things. I think the reason why they're so popular, like they never get to be completely maybe mind blowing if you're used to some of like the really coolest things, but most people who grow them wind up with like really pretty frosty weed that smells pretty good. It smokes pretty good. It's like really easy to be that. It's like, it's like a, a like, a, like aroma tomato or a russet potato or just like regular Himalayan blackberries. Like there's certain things that like, if they grow and you keep them alive, you're going to get what it grows. And there's other things like sour diesel or OG Kush where when you grow those or haze, when you grow them, you could, you could have the same clone and wind up with it, like being like a one out of 10 or being like, holy shit, like this, we need a new scale. Cause this is like beyond a 10 right here. It's the same clone, but you could grow it and go, this isn't the one I had. And it's like, no, you know what? You didn't grow it. Like you used to grow it or you didn't have the good luck. And that's the same thing with, um, with reversals, it's like, maybe this thing's easy to reverse, but the way you did it this time wasn't good. I'm trying to do reversal outdoor, which people don't really do. And I'm like, okay, will it work? I'm like, oh, I get pretty close. And I'm like, the first flowers, they seem like they're getting too much humidity at night. It's not quite dry enough where I live. I have to take them and put them inside and put a dehumidifier there. Now I can't just leave them and let them seed plants. I have to collect the pollen. and it's a whole different thing. It's a huge pain in the ass. But I'm, I'm trying to learn about it just because I wanted, uh, I want to be able to take anything I really like and self it yep. and then have seeds for myself. And I'm like, also, I'd like to be able to make a bunch of hybrids that are feminized because there's a lot of people who are like, oh, man, I really want to grow your stuff, but I only, I only want to do feminized. I don't want the, the waste, you know, yeah. but it's all a trick, man. It's all like it's hard to, uh, you know, it's like it's a, it's a whole different thing. They're not, they don't behave like, like a male, but to your original question, the reason why some things you get a ton of pollen is because when you reverse them, they, be, they behave like a real male. You look at it and you go, oh, looks like a male. You shake it, pollen drops right out, right? Yeah. You can just collect it on a plate or on a piece of foil or on a table or whatever you want. The plant I'm reversing right now, it's so dense as a female 
that as a male, it doesn't really want to let its pollen loose. And it, um, you know, reversed plants are just, they don't quite, they don't quite want to be like a male in the first place, but yeah. some do. And the ones that do, those are the ones that are like the old European white widow cut, you know, chromes white, a few different, there's a few different things. And I'm like, well, I have the white, I could have just used that. Sure. But like people have already done so much with it. And that wasn't the one that I wanted self. I wanted this other plant self. So, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. And it was like, I did it with a goji OG because like the mom I have is so finicky. Like as soon as she hits, like, I think I've sent you pictures before where like, as soon as she hits the pot, she does that semi auto flower and like, like reversing cuttings every time like that. I see that it's like, it's so stressful. You know what I mean? Cause being that it's just such an older cutting and it's an OG, like, it already has been finicky for rooting its whole fucking life. So I got super nervous one time. I was like, I'm just going to reverse this thing. And so that last time I did it and it's like, I got a bunch of killer clusters and it made a bunch of great seed. But whenever I actually tried to shake it to collect pollen, like I just was basically getting clusters on the paper. I wasn't getting any actual pollen itself. Yeah. But I, t I think to what you're saying, like I do like where I live on the East coast, we're like literally 10 minutes from the coast. And then, we have a bay on the opposite side of us because we're on like a little peninsula. So like we just live in soggy conditions all year. So like I think to what you're saying, there probably was a lot of humidity going on at that time. So maybe the, that's why I didn't world, get any just wants, Yeah. It just yeah. wants to kill your pollen, dude. Exactly. Right. Right. Um, but so we were talking about too um, with the reversals. Do you know, did Skunk Tech, did he use like a, what silver did he use? Did one, use like one, thing I, one thing I thing I wanted to throw in there. You hear me? Oh, there we go. There we go. You hear me? I said a uh, trick that I learned too is is some plants, just like you know, Gene was saying, you know, you got to learn the plants. Some don't want to drop anything. Some, you know, some drop a ton. Just depends. But um, there's a few plants that, if depending on what you use and the strength of the spray that you're using, I mean, varies a lot. But usually, you get a reversal going. You get it all clustered up, and everything's beautiful going off with the, without a hitch. And then the plant doesn't really drop very much pollen. Um, and what I've what I've found is some plants, if I just continual continually spray them, regardless of what you know, give them a little boost towards the end, right when they're supposed to start dropping pollen and making pollen, uh, you can kind of kick some over to give you a little bit of extra pollen and keep them wanting to be, you know, or wanting to express that male form. You know what I mean? Because they kind of want to. They're females in general, and they want to revert back to being a lady in general. So the, those hormones will start getting blocked and the fucking pathways will start getting beaten down. And if you're not, not giving it a little extra, um, sometimes you don't get as much as you could, you know, in the end. So, um, yeah, like just enough to yeah, basically like, get your seed, but not enough to collect. Them. Yeah. Like, can, not enough to collect or anything like that, you know? So, um, don't, don't always give up on spraying things or, or try continually spraying them almost all the way through. Um, without damaging them in some aspects you know so it's one of those That's things scary. and then with the with the with the dense bud problem too <clears throat> the the thought the flowers that the feed that the females produce don't they lack the the little extra stem on the end of it i don't know i, f I always forget what it's called but there's a little extra stem on that flower that kind of pushes pushes the flower out so it's able to drop the pollen so all those all those flowers just get bunched in and cluttered, cluttered up, fucking stuck on one one another, and they can't they can't open or push out in any way. Um, so I I've been experimenting a lot, you know, over the last few years, um, like changing the light cycle after you get it you get it going and and the and the sacks are forming and everything's going is adding some light to get it to start kind of flipping to the to the veg side of things to to go to reveg and it kind of stretches out that those top colas when it starts to go to reveg modes and pulls those those male flowers apart a little bit more and some plants don't don't respond as well as, as, as others but i can get i can get some pam stuff to just <laughs> he'll be back i like oh, yeah. like that Tessa. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it and caught, then off caught off. Oh, oh. Go ahead, Ken. Oh, oh okay, okay, guys. Um, when I'm testing seeds, uh, I'm trying to treat them like I would treat any seed that I'd pay for. I'm trying not to abuse the plants necessarily. 
But should I lean toward being a little more abusive? Or what's your thoughts, being that you guys, you know, you make these beans, you want them to be stable. How much stress can they handle before they start showing some of those traits that aren't favorable? Such as Herma, you know, Herma. My my goal really with like growing things and testing things in general is to see what they do when they're grown pretty good you know it doesn't have to be like the most excellent grow like that's why i like to see them in a lot of different places it's interesting is that a lot of times what actually stresses like um the things you think of like growing an outdoor plant oh i'm gonna underwater it and i'm gonna beat it up and do all these different things like a lot of those things are not not really issues a lot of times it's like you treat it too good you give it a little too much food you water it a little too often, you know, if you're indoor, like maybe your room gets a little bit too warm or you have like too much humidity and heat swings. And there's like, it's like hard to figure out exactly what, what does everything wrong. But for me, I'm like, I'm less interested in what a plant does when somebody grows it really bad than I am what somebody, what it does when somebody grows it pretty good, you know? Because um, I don't really want to throw everything away because it doesn't do good when you grow it like shit. I don't really know very many things that do very good when you don't grow them well. You know what I mean? It'd be like, oh, I got this dog. I fucking Understood. Feeding it fucking bullshit food and treating it like shit. And fucking dog sucks, man. You know, it's just not that good. Like, it should have done better. You know, and just like, oh, I mean, what can you expect, you know? So I'm always looking for that. But um, I do like, well, I like to test things myself. And then I mess with like the light and do like the light leaks and stuff like that. And then I like to grow up next to things that I know are really, really resilient, um, that are really hard to herm out or really hard to make get messed up. And then see what it does it do relative to that, you know? But then when you give things to people, it's always like, it's always surprising. I'll give something to somebody and be like, hey, these are sketchy. These are like really sketchy. I hermed these out, but they're really good weed. Try them out and they'll be like, no, they're fine. And then they'll breed something with them and everybody will use that and it'll all be fine. And I'll be like, fuck, I haven't been growing these things for like almost 10 years now because I just was worried that I was going to, they were going to be horrible. And now everybody else made 20 crosses from them and it's like super good and they're all fine and um you know it's weird it's hard to predict but i i don't i don't as far as for testing it's like yeah to a degree i like i i like to see more like up to chance as far as somebody's like damn yeah i, I grew this in my ace Well, I'm definitely a mediocre grower. I'll give myself uh, that tag at this point. I'm only a few cycles in. So, Tyler, now that you're back and functioning, do you want to finish your thought from before? And then, Jackson, you can <laughs> finish your thought from now. <laughs> man, the, hill, the, the farm people, man, we're awesome. Um yeah, I was saying like, yeah, I've, I've been playing around with light cycles, trying to stretch out the flower uh, of those really tight clustered ones like Mac One and uh, you know some you know, ice cream cake and a few of my Pam Pam finds and stuff. They're really dense, and by you know kind of getting them to kind of go to reveg mode, kind of peel their their flowers apart a little bit. And, you know, I on a few of them I've gotten a good amount of good pollen that way. So. Um, it's it's like it's just it's an art man it's like it's like how strong is it how many times you spray it is it humid is it, you know are you doing enough of them there's like so many of these little these little parallels to like get you know get it right and like the dog walker for example i've tried to reverse the dog walker several times three three or four times now and i get it all the way to looking killer you know it won't have a burn on it it's fully stacked male flowers galore uh, and just so little pollen if any pollen can i get to come out of there so i've tried it in various you know humidities and 
insides and outsides, hoops protected. You know, I've, I've done it in a lot of different ways, and every single time it's kind of the, the same thing to where I can't I can't get enough seed to to do anything fun with. You know, a couple of them, you, know, you pop them, you find them, you get some clones and stuff like that. But it's one of those finicky ones where it's just hard. It's hard to get me for whatever reason for me. That one's always been a hard one to to give me pollen when like say the the old SFV you know clone will drop fucking you know a ton of pollen and I can pollinate a whole bunch of them with very little um and using the same types of techniques point it's, it's very you know they're so individual it's it's, it's wild so uh, it's fun but it's definitely uh you got to be willing to fail you know for sure and Jackson the completion of your last thought <laughs> I was just, I was just saying like as far as like um, things as far as like stress testing I always like it when it's the things that happen organically like somebody's that uh, some just got fucked up while they're growing it and it turned out it did good through it you know what I mean like um, but I just I don't know I've never I've never been a fan of like of like oh I I intentionally just did everything wrong and this is what the plants did because I'm like, I mean, you all, all the best yeah. plants that I know of, they would have been thrown away. You know what I mean? Nobody would have ever kept OG sour haze, even Skittles cookies, like anything that really, a lot of people really, really enjoy and like it would have been thrown away. I mean, I grew AK 47, which was really like, has been very popular and like uh dude who bred it is super renowned as like a real great breeder and that's kind of one of his biggest things simon and i grew him and i stressed him and like every male was a female and a bunch of the females turned male and they were like horrible and i was like this is horrible but i already know what it is and i know i have the real ones and i know other people had grown them and they were great and i was like okay well there you go if that was me and i was growing them like that growing them like shit on purpose i would have been like throw this away this thing's garbage but at the same time it's already been renowned for years and years and years and people love it and the cut that somebody kept that has been around for a long time i use that and i bred with that and i love it i love how it bred you know and i love how it grows but mine looked like shit. But was that the fault of the plant? It certainly wasn't in that case. You know what I mean? So I, I like to I like to have people grow them and try to grow them well. And then if there's hiccups, I'm interested in those. I'm interested in if the lights went off for two days or if the AC failed or if they were giving them this and they didn't realize it. Like, oh, shit, I checked and it turned out like my runoff was super high and you know, like then you find out because you do want that information so that you can figure out like, OK, what do they like and what do they not like? But what they don't like doesn't define them as being a piece of shit plant. It's like you need to learn the plant. And if you don't like the plant enough to learn it, then get something different and learn that one. You know what I mean? But if I grow something really, really good and I love it, I'm like, OK, I want to figure out what I'm doing wrong with it. And um I think, you know, there's a certain learning process to all of that. And then if a bunch of people grow them and they try to grow them really good and none of them are really exceptional, those are the ones that I'm like, no, that those suck. If I grow them and I know I did pr a pretty good job and I really don't like them, then I'm like, yeah, these, this is the one that gets axed. But I'm not, I'm not getting rid of things because they don't do good when you treat them like shit. Because we don't either, and your dog doesn't, and your kids won't, and your car won't. Nothing's going to do that great when you treat it like shit. Is a Toyota awesome because you can treat it like shit? It's pretty cool. And there are plants that are like that. So those that's like when you do discover that, yeah, that's that has a merit to it. But uh, at the same time, it's not my mindset to look at things and go, okay, let's do the worst we possibly can and see if it still does great. Because the likelihood is already so low from the beginning, you know? So that's how I look at that, like the extreme stress testing. It's like, if, if it happens, cool, pay attention and log that information and go, whoa, this one, the dude forgot to water it and lost it in his greenhouse. My buddy.
he'll be back. That specific example hit me in the heart. I just acquired some AK-47. So I'm like, fuck, I hope you do good this summer now. <laughs> they, need, they need plants. It's a good line, you know? I was just going to say, I, my buddy lost a cherry pie, my cherry pie cut crossed with the pina, and he had a little start in his greenhouse, and he forgot that it was in there. And he went, he had me come in at the end of the year, and he goes, look at this. The thing was still alive. It had rooted into the ground and there wasn't really much water, but neither of them need very much water. And it had lived, survived and grown weed here inside a greenhouse, which is like, should have just killed it instantly in like a matter of two or three days. And it was there and it smelled incredible and it was so cool. And that was something that was worth noting, like, whoa, okay. So probably if you grow this one, you're probably going to overwater it. So you can probably get it, give it very little. If it can survive under these conditions, it probably doesn't want it. So it's all cool to see. But at the same time, I'm not going to be like, hey, dude, take these, put them in your greenhouse, never water them, and tell me how they look at the end of the year. It's like, no, dude, this is just not going to be practical, you know? So that's, that's how I look at that stuff. Yeah, and I'm the same thing where it's pretty much I think the best thing you can do for testing seeds is send them to somebody else. Like, you know, there's many other people trying them out in as many different situations as possible. You know what I mean? Because, you know, same thing as most of these guys here, like I'm an organic grower and, you know, in a certain situation, you feed things that have been bred organically with a bunch of synthetics. Like they might act a little fucking weird on you. You know what I mean? So it is a good idea. Just send them out as to many people as you can. And yeah, then you, you know. Yeah. Yep. Um, but that being said, so it sounds like, Ken, you're running them outdoors. Corey and Tyler, are you running those suckers out? I'm, I'm going to run them inside. Okay. What about you, Tyler? I oh, hope you're we muted there, really... Tyler. He's just lost I audio. Think, huh? I think you got to maybe try now. Maybe he's got to leave and come back. To he's gonna have to leave and come back. Yeah, you gotta leave and come back. While we wait for Tyler to come back, so Corey, uh, what kind of like lights are you running? Are you doing like a tent setup? You got a room, or how do you, uh, you got set up? I got a small room. Uh, the room, I'm, the area I'm gonna be flowering in uh, is right now. Uh, let's see, we got one, two, three, so four by five by twelve something like that i'm gonna be running three uh 720 leds nice sweet deal man and yeah. then uh so man i so I, so, so j just quickly uh because i'm super high right now and i'm gonna forget and i also can't read anything in the chat right now <laughs> but uh let me give me one second all right so rusty who's in the chat also grew this out uh i think he said it was the back middle one and then the flower looks like that nice oh hell yeah and so that kind of looks to me like what i would like consider jaro nugs gene is that something that looks more like jaro or more like the black affy yeah the affy is more like that like it's like you look at it and you go, well, it's not super visually resinous, you know, that's what I was saying earlier. And then you, then you roll it up and you're like, oh shit. Okay. Because it's like, it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have the biggest heads and it doesn't have the, it doesn't have like any, any stems onto, you know, to the, to the trichome. So when you look at it, you're like, yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's not frosty. It doesn't look so, you know, and that was the kind of weed that back in the 90s when we were young, we kind of learned like, oh, don't get fooled by this frosty shit. Almost every time you see really frosty weed, it would turn out that it would be like, eh, it doesn't really smoke as good. Because what make, gives the appearance of frost a lot of times is having those long, long legs, those long stalks yeah. on the trichomes, you know? And if you just have heads, then it doesn't look as flashy. But... um uh, you know, there's an occasionally, if you get something that looks crazy frosty and it really, it really is like 
good resin, then those ones are crazy, you know. Uh, some of the limes are like that. Some of the jaros are like that. But yeah, the black affy, I never saw like a super frosty black affy. Um, but it would always hit you in the chest, you know. It's got like a layer of, of stuff on it. And that one's kind of got that resin look to it where it's like, if I look at it, I go, it's not that resinous, but I wouldn't judge it until I tried it, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah. And just quickly, the, the last one is Floyd uh, from Hoku, who's up in, in Colorado. And he may join us in a bit, but he sent a video. Uh, the first plants in the video are these African land race I sent to him that... Uh, a very nice man sent in to get out to people. Uh, and then the second ones are what we're talking about here. That so man. So, yeah, I got them and then these five gallon pots and they're a little uh, hungry. I top dressed them, but I have to get them in some fresh soil. The, but, these are the African land race. Um, yeah, I think I've got, what, three, six, nine, um, 12, 15, 18. So I've got 18. Um, they're just starting to show sex um but uh yeah no they're looking good so i'm gonna move those into one of my seed rooms do an open pollination and probably throw some cuts but uh these are the uh, headband crops for mean gene so these i'm really excited about i can't remember how many seeds came in the pack but i'm pretty sure i had 100 percent um i got eight eight girls so um you know I, if i had them spaced out in better uh you know better pots better soil they'd, they'd probably be a lot bigger than they are now but uh, i think they'll be a good size um and once i get them in the, the big big pots i've got 100 gallon 200 gallon pots and they'll uh, they'll fill up so like a little heat stress um on some of them because i had them indoors and uh brought them out under this blazing sun but yeah man hope you're doing well not they're they're not as green as my uh volunteers <laughs> so anyway that that was from that was floyd's update nice man so damn i'm way behind you guys i'm gonna have to get on it <laughs> um shoot all right so here's the fun question man so all of us guys that are like super into seeds Whenever we're buying crosses, there's always one of the something in the cross that catches our eye that we're kind of hoping to find out of it. So we'll start with you, Ken. What are you hoping to find out of this, man? And I don't think you'll hurt um, Jackson's feelings. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, not knowing anything about this strain uh, that's been, you know, the tester. I'm looking for something like old school skunk, something that reminds me of the eighties and is just heavy. It's heavy, you know, like roadkill. I mean, I don't know if I'll find that with this, but it's, um, Oh, I'm trying to think it's more, a little more citrusy than that, but it, you know, it's going to evolve. It's still pretty early. Nice. Tyler, what about you, man? What are you, what are you hoping to find here? Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's going to be a big part of my smoke this year. So I got all, I got everything else planned out and rocking and rolling. So it's going to be stuff that I'm going to be smoking. Um, I've never grown anything from Gene, you know, nothing, you know, directly from him. I've grown things that has had his stuff in it one way or another. But I've never grown any grown any of his seeds, so uh, this will be this will be my first. So I'm, gonna, I'm, you know, they all cracked. It's like you know, it's expected. You know, I'll run them. I'm gonna run them inside, outside, just the way I do anything else. Um, everything here gets grown depending on the time of the year, and you know, to a size where I can take a couple of cuts off them or a cut off of them, and then I flower and you know, run that cut a little bit see what the seed does i really i run it you know and so um it'll get run for sure uh, nice you know, man what a, shouldn't be any what hiccups a, i mean there should be you know it's, you know, it's going to be smoke so we're gonna we're gonna grow it so it'll be good 
Yeah, it sounds like you'll appreciate it either way. I can respect that. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> Corey, what are you thinking, man? What are you what are you hoping to find out of this? Uh, I really wasn't I wasn't thinking of anything until you brought it up and hearing Gene earlier talking about some of those real dock leaves and and that sounds wicked interesting. I'd I'd like to see some of that it would be fantastic. Um, some of that finished flower that I saw looked really similar to the uh, to the uh, cross I was talking about earlier, the hairband, and uh, that was a resin producer. I mean, that would plug a joint up in no time at all. I mean, you know, before the halfway point, easily it was good and hashy. So yeah, something something dark like that, you know, good and hashy. I I know it's going to be strong strong weed. So yeah, I'm excited about it. Real excited. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. So I, I've already said it on Instagram when I was talking about this, uh, tonight, man, I'm, I'm a big headband fan. When I was a kid, like I got this back a headband that it pretty much was like, I don't know, man, I smoked a bunch of mids back in the day, you know, like that's all you had when you were a kid, you couldn't afford shit. So it was like my third or fourth bag of like real good weed. It was some headband. And I don't know. I just remember smoking with a bunch of buddies and I just actually got that like tight around the temples feeling my eyes were just fucking swollen shut. You know what I mean? Like that. It was just, I can't re- like, I'll never forget that, you know? And I'm sure it's like, I'm chasing that experience. Of course, that you'll never find from a kid. But uh, for me, man, like I just would love to find like a good headband cut out of it. You know what I mean? But um, the black Affy too, you know, we all know that it's made a bunch of killer stuff. We all know the root beer is just like, you know, fucking awesome. So if anything that I find out of it that has a black Affy going on too, man, I'm excited to get into that. Um, anybody that knows me knows I'm a fucking hash plant fiend. So anything that's got an old Afghani in it, I'm, I'm just stoked on it in general. So that's what I'm hoping to find out of it. But uh, either way, man, I'm definitely really stoked about this project. I'm definitely really appreciative that Gene would let us have all these seeds, man. That's really cool. You guys set this up. Thank you very much. Gene, sure. you smoked uh, any, of the, any of the crosses? Have you run them out yet at all for yourself? You ever, have you seen any in have you seen any in the jar? I haven't done these ones yet. That's why I was like, okay, I yeah. want to see. I have a dozen of them yeah. going right now. So at the end of the year, I'll have an idea of what, uh, you know, a little slice of them look like. Um, yeah, heck yeah. I figure a dozen females, if if they all suck, then you know that it's not that great. <laughs> and if a dozen females, if there's more than a few that, that are really nice, then it's, you know, decent. But I, I'd like to see, I'd like to see like, you know, ten out of twelve be be weed that I like want to smoke and that I really like, and then, um, you know, then we can put some out. But um, I'm hoping too that like with them getting going around to people, that people find some cool something cool that they want to keep out of them. Like the idea of the cross was basically it was like, all right, I can get the pollen. And so what would I put it on? And so I basically put it on stuff that I thought was in the realm of the, of the more gassy, um, acrid, like, you know, I'm not going to say like, you'll get skunk out of it, but like, it's not going to be, it's not going to be like candy, you know, you're going to get stuff that's going to be pretty deep and funky. Um, I would imagine after seeing, I've seen a lot of stuff from that headband now, like probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 different crosses and like, you know, five to 20 plants of each of all the fems that Skunk Tech did. Like he brought flats and flats of jars from all those breedings. And then, um, and then, you know, the, 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 the mom came out of stuff that I've seen quite a bit, which is, typically OG, like it's really nice OG. And then this one just happened to be the one that leaned back to the more, you know, what, when I, in the field, when I originally pulled it out to re-veg it, I was like, whoa, this is smells like skunk, you know? Then after a while I went, no, it has like, um, I don't know. When, when, when the original weed started getting called skunk, it was because it wasn't the, it wasn't the sweet weed that everyone was used to or the, you know, the things that you think of that come out of Colombian and Mexican and Thai and that kind of stuff, because here that was what was, was around previously, you know, Oaxacan and, and different things like that. 
And then when people got Afghani, they called it all skunk. And now people will go, oh, this is nah, 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 nah. But like, originally the reason they started calling stuff skunk was because it was so different. It smelled acrid and funky. And, um, and that's how this plant is. It's like, that's not, that does not smell like some kind of, uh, you know, sweet, uh, thing. It's, it's, it's gnarly, you know, but at the same time, it's more, you know, coffee, licorice, uh, petroleum, like that kind of, uh, you know, like a, like a machine shop rag, kind of like the really common smell in all the Afghani stuff, if it's that type of Afghani, but, uh, it's kind of a refined version of it. And, uh, it, it tastes, it's so, you know, like steamy. What was that? I lost it. Awkward pause. Dun, dun, dun. Well, either way, man, I'm super excited. I would love to find an oil rag Afghani, man. Like, I'm a sucker for chems, so, like, I love that. Just any kind of acrid, like, um, as far as, I guess, um, to kind of wrap it up with you guys, since we're kind of getting, you know, I'm running out of questions, the best way to put it. <laughs> um <laughs> So since you haven't ran them yet, Gene, and you're kind of hoping like to find just something dank that you would enjoy smoking wise, um, when you would go to do a release for that, is that something that you would release the seeds that you just made now, or would you have to remake something like that and then re-release like those seeds? Well, that was one thing that was kind of cool about it was that I knew that I had the parents of it, and I knew that the, that the male side of it for the reversal was a good, a really good candidate for reversal so if if i wanted i could remake it but um the seeds if i release the seeds they'd be from the original uh batch um seeds as long as they're stored good are flawless for years and years and years they just you just have to make sure that when you make them you get them real dry and you put them away and you keep them properly stored you know i don't let out any seeds that don't approach a hundred percent on a germ test you know like if i if i go to pop seeds and i pop 35 for a germ test and there's not 34 or there's not 35 like even if there's one that doesn't come up and it looked like a good seed i might want to like pop a, a little bit more and see if that happens again just to know like to me seeds in general once you sort them and you know that they're he the heavy seeds and the air has got rid of all the seeds that are light like my seeds that I throw away are probably, they probably wind up being half viable, you know? Cause you let the plant go all the way to the point where everything in it is as good as it can get it. And then you get rid of all the ones that didn't quite form right. And uh, the majority of the seeds that aren't good are like, um, they actually stop, they actually never, form, they, they stopped forming. So they start, and then they never keep forming. But once the seeds get to the point where they have an actual, like, real shell on them, and they're not just like a papery little white puff of a seed, it's like most of those seeds that get through, get past that to actually form, they're viable. And those ones, I throw away a lot of them because they're not as heavy as the other seeds. And when you go through the sorting process, they blow out. And when I go out to look where I throw away all the seeds that are no good, it's just all starts as soon as it rains. <laughs> it. Thousands of plants. And you're like, well, these seeds were good. You know, they just aren't, you know. And, 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 you know, a lot of people know that. A lot of people who sell seeds know that. And so when you look at their packs, you look in the packs and you're like, these are all the ones I throw away. Like, they're not good. Or even like some people who sell fem seeds, it's so hard to pull off a successful reversal that if they germ test them and they all come up, they're like, cool, we're going to release these. But they like are really not good looking seeds. So like when I have these seeds like that, I gave um, Peter to give you guys, if you look at the seeds, it's like, okay, these are nice seeds. 
And seeds like that, if you put them away right away, like they, you won't start losing any viability on those for like 10 years. You know, you'll pull out seeds that are, that are, I've pulled out seeds that were stored at room temperature that were eight, nine years old and still got a hundred percent off of them. And then all of a sudden, if they're not stored properly, then it just falls off all at once. All of a sudden you're like, okay, now I can hardly get any of these to come up just a year later. But if you put them in the fridge, they get to that point where they're 10 years in and they're hundred percent. And then you go 12 years, 14 years, 16 years, whatever. And you plant them and you're like, they're all still fine, you know? So it's just a matter of how you, how you treat your seeds. But yeah, I mean, they're, they could be remade. And that's what I liked about it was I was like, if it, if it, if by chance people love these and I run out, then I can remake them. And I'd like to have more stuff like that because I tend to use males and then even if I clone the male and keep them after a while, I'll, I'll lose patience with having this extra plant. And I'll be like, oh, you know, if it's that good, it must have carried through to the progeny and I can get a new male out of those seeds is how I look at it. And then I might be shooting myself in the foot sometimes. But like keeping keeping females around is really easy. It's really easy to keep the keeper from whatever 60 females of the of the one and then keep the headband which is like a really good keeper cut you want anyway and then if you ever want to remake it you're like here's the combo you know so fe feminized seeds are really cool like that because you're more likely to want those parents to stay in your stable whereas with the male you have to really see that it really brought something to the table beyond the gene pool it came out of so if i keep like a line male i have a line male right now and I grew stuff from him and I, he, he was like a really rare pick. So I'm keeping him, but like eventually years down the road, I might be like, eh, you know, I have all these seeds. I have thousands and thousands of seeds from him. One of them's probably just as good as him. And, you know, whereas with females, you're like, ah, I already found it. Like, I know for sure this is the one. And, and uh, you know, but you, sh you should ideally do the same thing with males and probably even lean in the direction of thinking the males are more important um, because it takes more work. It's really easy to find the female and know it's the one you want because you grow it once and you smoke it once and you're like, here it is with the male. It's like I wind up crossing it to all these different things and you grow all these different things. And I think it's just more of a mania of wanting to see what, it, you don't you just i just don't want to use the same mail again i want to use a new mail because maybe it's better She's so and then bad. after a while you wind up with this collection of mails and you're like i haven't even used them for like two years or however long and then you know so it's just a goofy thing but the whole thing is is, is a mania i think well uh that it's almost like puts you to the point of like i was saying earlier for i only reverse things for preservation like i haven't reversed any of my work to make feminized seeds or anything like that so I'm like, I wonder if it's a good idea to maybe start reversing males just to preserve your male line. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's such a weird <laughs> kind of thought, but. Well, it's a cool um, way to inbreed too, you know, like it's a cool, cool way if you want to make, like selfing is really cool and people don't sell. I don't think people self males enough. I think like you, especially in the case where like, I try to tell people, I kind of like lurk on the internet for when people go, I popped all these old vintage seeds and I only got one plant and it's a fucking male. I'm like, dude, clone it, reverse <laughs> it, make regs after one breeding of your male. And it's so much easier to get a male to get hairs, it seems like, than it is to get viable pollen off of a female reversal. Um, so it's just a little bit, it seems like a more, like, it's definitely like an underused, um, trick. And, uh, so I, I think it should be done more and also like back crossing. So I did a thing a couple times where I would back cross to the male side instead of the female. So I like take the lime pop male and make like, you know, like juicy gummy cross lime pop which juicy gummy was already a line pop cross. So now it's a male, it's a back cross to the male side just to see like, okay, well we lean it that way. And then that shows you a little bit more what's inside the male. You get a better idea of its genotype, like for what, like this is what it is versus what it's just doing because of what we're doing. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a good, a good thing, but it's all, it's all useful. It's all valuable. All the different, you know, 
every different way to do it. And I'll tell you what, once you try doing like, this is my first like real try at doing a reversal. And I'm like looking at it going, man, everybody loves fem seeds out for the for the convenience but if you actually want to be like a preservationist and keep things around like it, it's a good tool to be able to to do feminized seeds but when you look at what a regular male does like how a regular male performs you're like this is a male you put that thing out there and you are making corn on the cob you're getting seeds and it i say corn on the cob but Mr. Trees down here knows it's actually harder to make corn on the cob than <laughs> wheat in the corn on the cob. Because corn is is more finicky and harder to, you know, it's arranged weird. The silk is in clusters. It's hard to get in there and all that. But like males are, uh, after trying to do reversals, I'm like even more a fan of regular seeds because I'm like, dude, you get a male, it's just you are making seeds, you know? And maybe... It's a little bit less predictable because you don't know exactly what it does. But like I, you know, I'm more sold than ever because for me, it's like the sustainability of like, OK, so you want to do a reversal, but you're going to have to have an area that's good enough to preserve your reversed pollen because it can't form here outside. I couldn't have done it outside. My pollen was dying as it formed. Basically, I could get a little you could make a little bit, but not very much. And then um you know, you, you, there's all these little things, there's all these little things that can be hiccups. You need something to reverse the, the plants. So you got to spray them or you have to be like, you know, people are like, Oh, just let it go extra long or mess with the light cycle. I'm like, I mean, good luck with a lot of plants. That's not how everything works. But if you have a, a line that's, if you know that you've got seeds that have already been pr like, if you get like sky cuddler, double cush seeds from me, and you take the females and you leave the male out there and you hit them, you got a million sky cuddler double cush seeds inbred that'll all be what you want and you got them and they're there and you stick them in the fridge or whatever and they're there. But if you want to take one of the females and try to reverse it, who knows? Maybe it'll reverse, maybe it won't. Maybe you'll get 11 seeds, you know? But with a male, it's just like, Wah. Here we go, you know, jars and jars and bags and bags of, of seed. You know, you can grow up forever. So in my head, I was gun ho. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start reversing males and like, so I start like making my STS. And I was like, wait, I don't think you can fucking use STS. No, you yeah. use you use uh you use uh you use a product called Florel. It's at the fun. Yeah. At the yeah. Fun, yeah. And Fl Florel is just like the yeah. most widely available. Florel, you know? yeah. And they use it to like in like the city to prevent trees from setting fruit so that they don't have to sweep the shit up later on. And they use it for different things, but it, it, um, yeah. it basically, yeah, you use, uh, you use a tablespoon. I think it's a tablespoon to 28 ounces of water. And, uh, then you spray it. Uh, I can't remember. I have the recipe, but sure. Uh, it, but it, but it, anyway, it's, it's, it's totally doable. And I've told people how to do it and they've tried it and even tried it way too late, like not done it how I was told to do it. And they're like, look, here it is. And I made seeds and that's from a male and it's like, Oh, okay, cool. You know, and you don't have to make seeds with it. You can just do it so you can smell the weed. And then you go, Oh, okay. This male is what I thought it was. Yeah. And, but it's a great trick, but you're still going to have to grow the shit out because you don't know if that plant, just like the female you're using, you don't know if it passes that on in the next generation. And, you know, it's all you, you always have. To yeah, grow. man. It, it, yeah, it's yeah, it's a bitch. Like, I, especially like you never know what plant's going to pass what, you know, like or the direction you breed things, you know, like sometimes like, you know, if I breed the Pam one or anything, Pam two something and use that as the male side. Um, it it'll dominate the flavor profiles of anything that I put it on for the most part, you know, but if I use like something else onto it and, and put like the OG onto the Pam, then I get OG notes in, in there in the domination of, of them. But it's like kind of, kind of a flip floppy who passes what and what stage, whether they're reversed or they're males or and if you find that male or that, that, that good pollen donor, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, it's easier to get tired of those males. I don't know why. <laughs> I was laughing when you were saying 
I get, you know, I get bored with them, keep them in the corner. I do all that too. I just get so tired of them. And they're like, and they'll go outside for a little while and I'll look at them for a couple of weeks and I'll, and I'll wonder if I'm going to keep them around. You know, it's like, yeah, they, it's, it's, you know, can go through them, but yeah, pollen's awesome. They Back end up becoming original. like, they become <laughs> the stepchild. You're just like, you see yeah. them off to the side staring at him. Like, I'll get to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you keep cut, you keep cutting, and you keep cloning and cloning and cloning and cloning. You've cloned them so many times, and you're like, I haven't really had the chance to where I really wanted to use this one for what I kind of thought maybe I would use it for, or you know, you don't wind up like uh, I don't know. It's just so much time can go by. It's a trip. Like you don't, you you only have so much time and so much focus, and it's real easy to. Uh, to you know wind up with these plants that you're like what was the why did i keep this why do i have this plant you know i have this huge collection and i'm like i have a couple plants that i look at and i'm like uh, i've had ones that i've kept for five years and i'm like you know what you're not gonna do anything with that yeah. you don't flower it you don't seed it yeah it's funny how relative those projects get, right? It's like, yeah. like having a bunch of vehicles in your yacht on blocks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's a classic. You know? yeah, I'm going to get to that someday. I know I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I'll have one where I know it's good, but it's not quite what I want it for. And I'm like, this is like, you. it's like a candidate for adoption. You're like, uh, I wish everybody could look at this weed in the bag and then they could decide if they want to adopt this because maybe they want to start. Because it's good with. for something. It's not It's not terrible. You're like, I know it's such, but I haven't done nothing with it. So what am I really doing? That's oh, awesome. Man. And I'm guilty too, where like, I'll let people come by the farm and I'll just be like, hey guys, like whatever cuttings you guys want to take home. And I've been guilty of not telling people that this plant's off in the corner are males and people get all fucking excited. And then they'll be like, hey man, so what's up with this Vibe Beach Gany head scream? I'm like, oh dude, that's a fucking male. Like, you don't get too excited. Like, <laughs> they're like, dude, I've been nursing this sucker for four fucking weeks. But, uh, so anyway, man, I did want to ask about, uh, Moon Mountain Kush. What came, what was the name inspired by? What made you think of that? Is it because you're up there well, on the mountains? Yeah, no, no. The the deal with that was that it was a uh, uh, was it was a Jaro cross, right? And Jaro comes from 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 Mount Kilimanjaro, really from Kilimanjaro, the Jamaican sound system, right? Uh, my Jamaican buddy named that strain, and uh, uh, so the there's an old old reference back in the day to the the mountains of the moon and it's like actually about some other mountains but it was misinterpreted for years and years to be um one of the first come from one of the like one of the early people to be from outside of the area to see kilimanjaro and if you're like on in a certain side of it it's like the moon rises out of the mountain is how it looks and you know so so there's a reference to kilimanjaro as being mountain of the moon and wow. uh, and so it was just like a spin on jaro basically but i had i had inbred it um like you know there's already a bunch of breeding was in the jaro and then like i said i went to that one that one uh florida and then the real florida and then um then i inbred it a couple times and uh so i was like okay grew it saw what they did and i was like all right this thing could have a name instead of just what's on my tags and when i write them i just write og og jaro because i know that that's the only one that's like that you know but like all the names they they just are like these like a little chunk of each of the names and I write them on the tag and put them in the pot so that I know what they are so that I don't have to have like a key where I go, okay, what's number 22? Uh, okay. I just write the name of, that's like the cross that makes sense to me. You know, and then I wind up with these goofy things like sky cuddler Kush or OG OG Jaro or whatever they are. So, um, just once I had once I had more experience with it, I was like, okay, I'll give this one a, a real name, you know. And now the tags say MMK instead, you know, which is much easier. And I know I know what it is, but uh, but that's the origin of it was from it's ju it's just a spin on Jaro, you know. It's a different because it's a different version of Jaro. It's like not as big growing as pure Jaro, 
and there's a lot more OGs that pop out of them. And uh, grown right, it's you know, it's got the sour in it, it's got the OG in it. One of those ones that you can grow it and be like, yeah, it's pretty good, or you can really nail it, just like OG Kush. You know, I've some of the worst weed I've ever seen has been OG and sour and all those really legendary things. Haze, like I just had like some um, some A5 haze. And I was like, oh, I've just found this. I got this. It's, you know, I haven't, I didn't ever smoke it. I need to smoke this. And I took it and I was camping on the beach and I rolled it up, rolled up a fatty and lit it. And I was like, damn, this is exactly like the shake I used to buy in Hawaii when we were hitchhiking around the island and we couldn't get any weed and we had to buy we had to buy shake from the one dude, Frank in Hana, who had some weed that we could get our hands on. And it was just horrible. And I'm smoking it and I'm like, it's nostalgic, but this is shake, dude. And it was not, it was bud. And it was A5 Haze, legendary, right? I was like, this is fucking garbage. But that's how it is. Those plants that are like that, they can be really good or really bad. Now, the Moon Mountain Kush, if you grow it really bad, it'll never be as bad as that one was. But um, it's it to me. It's always been good when I saw it. I've never seen it like bad, but I've seen it really fucking good. You know, like it really gets up there and gets good. So it's killer weed. Now is it more of that Kush where like it's like the TK like super piney kind of Kush, or is it more of like that kind of earthy acrid like you're like maybe is that the I guess the what like maybe like the ghost or kind of like that. It has. Coming from the Jaro, it has like, there's like a special, a special kind of an OG thing that, I don't know, maybe I relate it more to PK. It's not sweet, but it's like, uh, it is a sweetness in a sense. Like, um, it's one that I've never been able to describe well at all. I can't describe even OG Kush really well. People go, oh, it's pine and lemon. And I'm like, I don't smell any of that shit with it. Definitely earthy. It's definitely got the earthiness. Um, and it, but, but the, but OG, there's different OGs to me. There's like a range of OGs. There's OG where it all smells like almost like something that, like my buddy TC called the janitor's closet where it smells like something you'd clean floors with. And then there's the OG that's more like earthy and dank and skunky and more like the Yeska cut that I have. And then there's OG that has more depth to it where you're like, what is that? It's like a candy, but you can't really say because it's really not that sweet. It's not like it's a sweet, sweet weed, but it has this depth to it. And that's the, the good, uh, the good OG, OG Jaro from the beginning. It's had like, uh, that depth to it where there's this certain sweetness different than like the sky cuddler Kush, which is more like a, just like a marshmallow baby powder. So peach melon kind of like, thing like that this is like straight og like my buddy who's grown og forever he did a whole row of them in his greenhouse and he goes dude he goes what were those again and i told him what was in it and he goes they just came out just they're just straight og and i went over and checked them out and i was all oh these are all from the seeds and there's not a couple of each or anything and he's like no these are this original seed plants he's like we cloned them but these are the leftover ones from the original pots and i was like dude they're just all so og but they're, um, but they're like the, the really full OG, you know, they're not like those chopped up, those little sections. It's like really, I don't know, a lot to it. I like them a lot. They're, they're good. But I don't know how to describe that sweetness that it has. Cause it's not, I don't know. I mean, almost gassy in the sense of real gasoline. You know how gasoline has a weird sweetness to it or how, I don't know if you like, you smell like solvents when you're a kid, like nail polish remover or things like that. And they have like something that you like about them, even though it's not sweet. It's sweet to your nose in a sense. It's kind of like that. It's like, you're not supposed to like it, but you do. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's got that, <laughs> it, it has that depth to it like that, you know, but I don't know. And then, you know, they're not, it's not, they're not all the same, but 
they a lot of them have that kind of that cushiness to them that are like that it's like rusty said here he's like he said on the thing someone was like oh that weed doesn't look that good he's all if you zoom in it's got the resin and then he said it's he described it in there i saw in his comment he's all it's a very cushy deep kush <laughs> you know it's like if you know what you know if you're familiar with what kush is you're like this shit's cushy yeah. but how do you describe that eh, you know it's yeah. not it's it's hard yeah well you say kush and i say less man that's like uh, i'm fucking excited about it you know what i mean so well i guess uh fellas it's starting to get a little bit late and I pretty yeah. much have exhausted all the smart things that I could come up with anything to say. Um, Gene, Jackson, again, how come it's so much darker where you are than where I am? Can you hear me? Oh, I think he's frozen. Because <laughs> this yeah, is like, I'm just in uh, a... Outside right now, yeah. yeah, this is so... I'm farther of... south than you, so yeah, we're good, you know? You can, you can tell I'm in Alaska, you know. <laughs> yes. Winter's already on. coming. It's getting dark. Yeah, I have big windows right there. It's just like, no, nope, it's it's getting there. Yeah, man, you need to get yourself a fireplace. It's actually really nice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, again, dude, I really appreciate you sending the seeds out to us all, man. You know, you didn't have to do that. It was really cool that you did that. And Peter, oh, it was a cool thing. I was glad, you know, it's people like you want people to, uh, you want people who will actually like, like you can give testers to people and they don't ever plan them, you know? So it's like, if you can get them to people who actually will pop some seeds, then it's great. Cause otherwise it's like, okay, I grow them. I know how they do for me. Um, and maybe like, you know, someone here or there, but if they, the more they, the more they get circulated is it's good. Cause you know, I, 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 all my, everything that I ever put out is always grown before I put it out. And after you put it out, like without fail, there's always somebody who hits me. I get people who hit me up and they're like, the seeds didn't germinate. And I'm like, well, let me pull them out. And I pull them out and I'm like, I got a hundred percent. I'll give you more seeds, but what did you do? Oh, I had them on a heating mat. And well, I'm like, don't put your seeds on a heating mat, dude. You don't even know how hot that thing is. Like, where's, do you have a, is there a probe? No, it's on, it's just on medium. I'm like, dude, it could be 98 degrees on there. You're cooking your seeds, you know? And like, it's, it's always, you know, you always, you don't know like what, what people will do, but the more people grow things, the more, you know, like, oh, this, don't do this, do do this. And, you know, so get the more and more people growing them is great heck yeah well peter appreciate you lining all this up for us as well and fellas i definitely appreciate you guys popping seeds hopefully i uh I catch up to you guys here soon. <laughs> I love, hold on let's get a close-up of that oh. shirt that shirt is amazing there we this go this is a stylish man nice awesome <laughs> This man knows good style. He has good taste. You gotta represent all around, man. Respect <laughs> everywhere. Oh, there we go. Look at this guy. Look, and then the family tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I love it. laughs> well, that means that there's a mutual respect around the table here, fellas. So again, I really do appreciate I have you guys. Fresh Press, who's probably watching right now. That's makes awesome. good hash. And we got our boy Ken representing the skins. <laughs> <laughs> You know, right. really. <laughs> Thanks a lot for having me, guys. Of course. Thanks, yeah, and, and we'll we'll start to bring on some new because uh, I keep getting more and more out to people, and uh, there are some people who couldn't make it tonight, but they'll be on. Let's say, like in three weeks or something, we can do part two. Sweet deal. It sounds good to me. Awesome. All right, oh, fellas, yeah. we have a great rest of your night. And to everybody in the chat, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Peter, you got anything fun you need to tell us about going on this uh, I don't uh, know, the day of the week? I'm, it, I'm so high day? right I'm so high right now that now I <laughs> he, he didn't eat, Good enough he didn't for me. All day and then he ate a super burrito, you know? <laughs> I, I, just, I destroyed that thing. So Is that why you keep disappearing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fellas. Well, have a good one, all right? Have a Thanks, good one. Good to see y'all. See ya. Thanks. Later.